Yo, what is up, everybody? It's Jethro Game. Welcome back to another Naruto reaction video here today. And today we got quite an interesting video by the Great Swat Kage. It is how strong is Kakashi should put in. So surprisingly, I haven't done this yet, despite Kakashi being one of my very favorite characters in Naruto, probably like a top 10 character in my personal book. And, you know, he just has a very relatable personality. He has a very cool look and happens to be quite a powerful shinobi within the Naruto verse. So I'm pretty interested to see what Swag has to say as far as that. And in Shippuden specifically, I feel like there's a huge jump in his power from the beginning all the way to the end in the war arc. So I'm pretty interested, like I said, to see what Swag has to say about that as well. But before I begin, you know, any of us really appreciate it, hit that like button, drop notifications to stay with yours truly. And if you're a new one you enjoy and you mess with the kid, make sure to hit that sub button, man, because once you do, you become part of the family forever. But let's not waste any more time. Screen. Let's see what Swag has to say today. Hey, how's everybody doing today? Swag Kage here, and welcome to today's video. So last time we took a look at Kakashi before the time skip, and I didn't have much to say in that video. Uh, most of my focus was directed at how much weaker he feels in part one, if only because aside from narrative inconsistency, there doesn't seem to be much of a reason for him to have gotten as much stronger as he did between parts one and two. But in this video, I have a lot more information to work with. We get to see Kakashi fight a lot more. He makes right. use of a much wider variety of skills and jutsu. Most it's definitely. just a much easier subject to cover. So first, let's Let's take a look at his fight with Naruto and Sakura. Now, the version of this fight that we choose to use will sort of impact our perception of Kakashi, and that's because in the anime, there's a lot of filler fluff inserted, I assume, to make the Definitely. fight longer. Not that the intent really matters, but what is important is Kakashi seems a little bit stronger in the anime than he does in the manga. Now, to be fair, you could easily argue that these differences are negligible, so I won't spend too much time talking about them, but right. the biggest one is that in the anime, the fight is quite a bit longer than it is in the manga. And this is only important because Kakashi leaves his Sharingan exposed the entire time in both versions. And so if you're watching the anime, it's easier to interpret this as a sign that he's at least partially overcome his Sharingan fatigue issues. There are some other minor differences present in the anime version of the fight. Nothing too big. He uses a couple extra jutsu like the water dragon jutsu and the primary lotus. But he doesn't do anything that I think is important enough to focus on. Now that said, if you are interested, I'd recommend checking out both the anime and manga versions of this fight back to back so you can see some of the differences I'm talking about. But right. even if there were any super substantial ones, they wouldn't really matter because anime filler is non-canon, so it's sort of whatever. The only reason I brought it up in the first place, though, is in the manga version of the fight, we don't really learn anything about Kakashi. Uh, the fight's only about a chapter long, and even then, a good portion of the chapter is just Naruto, Sakura, and Kakashi talking to each other. So if we want to find any signs of how much stronger he's gotten, we're going to have to look elsewhere. His the fight with Itachi's 30% clone doesn't tell us much, but during he and Naruto's confrontation with Deidara, we learned that he has a Mangekyo Sharingan, which yeah. is obviously a very deal. cool. Now, what's very funny cool. about this is uh, his Mangekyo Sharingan is treated the same way in this arc as his regular Sharingan was treated back in the Land of Waves. He only uses Kamui a couple of times on Deidara, and even still, it takes a big enough toll on him that he's stuck in the hospital for the entire next arc. So even though he doesn't seem to suffer any negative side effects from using his Sharingan for long periods of time anymore, his new ultimate move has all of the same old drawbacks anyway. As right. a matter of fact, these side effects are actually quite a bit worse because at the very least, in the Land of Waves, Kakashi was up and ready to go by the time he was needed to fight again. Correct. But after using his Mangekyo Sharingan, he's knocked out of commission for a while. We don't see him in action again until Hidan and Kakazu show up. Now all that said, Kamui is still pretty serious business, so the fact that Kakashi can use it at all is by itself enough to make him stronger than he was. Oh, before. most definitely. And he used definitely. this jutsu against Zabuza, he would have won that fight immediately. There Definitely. would have been no back and forth, none of that. Now, it is important to keep in mind that Kakashi isn't great at using Kamui yet. He can't fully control the size or the position of the portal, but as we're shown, that doesn't change the fact that this is the most impactful jutsu he has in his arsenal. He essentially forces Deidara to retreat by sniping his arm off, and he also saves both Team 7 and Team 10 from being killed by Deidara's fake suicide bomb later in the same fight. So, even at its least refined, whether it's used offensively or defensively, it's pretty effective at accomplishing whatever Kakashi has in mind. Right. Anyway, the next two fights he participates in are first against Hidan and Kakazu, and second against two of the six. It was very impressive here. He doesn't here. do much in the fight against Hidan and Kakazu. He just wipes out one of Kakazu's hearts, and that's about it. But his performance in his fight against Pain is something that I'd actually like to talk about. Even though on paper Kakashi's performance doesn't seem super impressive, I'd actually argue that he did about as well against the Pads of Pain as Jiraiya did, and that's because he that's was fair. forced to 
fight the Very two fair. strongest. Aside Correct. from the animal path, the diva path and the osra path are significantly stronger than any of the other paths of pain. And even then, I'd argue that the animal path is still weaker than both of them. The asura path ripped off one of Jiraiya's arms with a single surprise attack, for example, and the diva path kind of speaks for itself, and yet Kakashi was almost able to wipe them both out by himself. He did destroy the asura path, and with a little bit of help from Choji and Choza, came very close to taking out the diva path as well, but was stopped by a last second interception from the Osura path. And now I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, well, Swag, what are you doing comparing Kakashi to Jiraiya here? Jiraiya fought all six paths of pain, but uh, that's not necessarily true. It's technically true that Jiraiya fought the six paths of pain at the same time, but he made no progress towards victory against them. Right. For most of his fight against pain, he was fighting either just the animal path or a team composed of the animal path, the human path, and the prey to path. That's with correct. two of these three being among the weakest of the entire group. As I agree. soon as the rest of the paths of pain showed up, it became very clear that Jiraiya stood no chance against them. And like I said earlier, the Osura path immediately took off one of his arms with a single surprise attack. We actually never got to see how Jiraiya would approach combating the diva pad's ability to manipulate fundamental forces. And yeah, sure, maybe he'd have been able to figure out a way to corner it, especially considering how much weaker pain was after blowing up the leaf village with Shinra Tensei. But it's also pretty easy to argue the opposite. Regardless of what you think though, I think it's pretty crazy that Kakashi did so well in this fight that you can compare him to Jiraiya in the first place. And yeah, it's a pretty I agree clear with that. sign that he's made a whole lot of progress since part one. His prowess with Kamui also improved significantly between the Kazekage rescue arc and the pain invasion arc as demonstrated when he manages to teleport a yeah. nail. He was very efficient with it here. Very impressive. Tensei. And shortly afterwards when he manages to teleport a missile moving at full speed towards Choji. His chakra pool also seems to have expanded at least a little bit since he manages to use multiple elemental jutsu including an earth style earth wall, multiple uses of Raikiri, and a lightning release clone shortly before using Kamui two times in a row. And while this pales in comparison to the sorts of Kamui and lightning release spam that he pulls off in the war arc, it's pretty impressive for Kakashi considering his previously established limits. While Kakashi doesn't seem to have grown very much speaking purely in terms of physical strength, he's definitely become a far more capable fighter since the beginning of the series. His ability to use Kamui, his larger chakra supply, and his wider arsenal of jutsu all make him feel quite a bit more threatening than he Agreed. did before. Now I don't know if I'd go as far as to say that early Shippuden Kakashi is Kage level, but he's certainly a few pegs above Jonin level. Even though at this point he was nowhere close to being one of Naruto's top tiers, he was still pretty strong and was absolutely a respectable fighter. Like yes. Shikamaru, he made up for many of his weaknesses with his insane intellect and tactical skills, and he was able to outsmart pretty much everyone he fought. Now that doesn't change the fact that he doesn't beat anybody. He doesn't win a single one of the fights that he participates in. And what makes this look even worse is the fact that he is often backed up by a small to medium sized team of other ninja. And now to be totally fair to him, his teammates often aren't the greatest. Like in a fight against people like Kakazu and Pain, it's hard to expect somebody like Choji to be of much help. But still, considering right. how many crazy jutsu he has at his disposal and how smart he is, you'd expect him to come away from at least one of these fights with a victory. And so the fact that he is consistently unable to, even with the assistance of multiple teammates, it's uh, it's definitely a little bit weird. Now this probably has something to do with the fact that he is constantly forced to fight the main antagonist of the current arc. He fights Deidara, Kakazu, and Pain, and he probably would have been forced to fight Sasuke if he had gone with Team Yamato to Orochimaru's hideout. And these are obviously all very powerful characters. They're the main antagonist of the arc for a reason. Not to mention they all have pretty thick plot armor since in the cases of Kakazu and Pain, Naruto had to, for narrative purposes, be the one to take both of them out. Now right. I'm not saying that Kakashi would have been able to win any of these fights without these narrative barriers, but considering who his opponents were, I also don't think it's fair to discredit him just because he constantly loses. Everybody agrees, for example, that Vegeta is really strong, and of course Kakashi isn't the Vegeta of the series, I mean it's pretty obvious who that is, but the point is just because he loses most of the fights that he participates in and doesn't beat anybody of real importance, that doesn't take away from the fact that he's really strong, and even if he couldn't beat most of the characters in the series, at least the ones introduced up to this point, he'd still be able to perform pretty well against them. Anyway, before I provide my final thoughts on early Shippuden Kakashi and move on to War Arc Kakashi, let's take a quick look at his accomplishments throughout the 5 Kage Summit arc. Now to be totally honest, you could completely skip this section and 
and not miss out on anything of real significance. But I don't want to get we'll a watch of comments from people being like, Oh, but, but, but Swag, you didn't talk about the five Kage Summit. But, yeah. but anyway, he doesn't really fight anybody in this arc. Uh, his only major fight is against Sasuke, and that fight isn't super long. The main takeaway from it is he isn't stoked about the idea of fighting against uh, Susano. Like, based on the look on his face right here, if Sasuke's Mangekyo hadn't pooped out on him at the last second, Kakashi probably would have died in this fight. Yeah, but, you know, they fought probably. each other after Sasuke had just gotten through fighting all five Kage back to back. So Sasuke obviously wasn't in tippity top shape at this point. Anyway, I'd like to bring everybody's attention to this panel right here where Kakashi says to himself after using Kamui once that he's not feeling so great afterwards. I just think it's kind of relevant since this happens right before the war arc, which we are about to start talking about. <laughs> but you know what? Actually, it, it's not a big deal at all. Don't worry about it. Anyway, so uh, how strong is early shipping in Kakashi? All right, so we're past halfway through this video. I want to give my two cents on what has been said so far now. I think the main takeaway from early Shippuden to Kakashi isn't that he lost, at least to me personally. The main takeaway is how there seems to be this significant increase in ability and power throughout early Shippuden. I mean, he does some work, man, against Akatsuki members who are all, at minimum, low-tier Kage plus, you know, low-tier Kage level. So he does very well. I guess all of them. Yes, he had help, right? But I guess Datara pretty well with the Kamui. I guess Kakazu and, and Hidon. Hidon got fucking wiped with Kakashi. He couldn't even hit Kakashi. And Hidon is an Akoski member. To be an Akoski member, you got to be damn near Kage level. So that is very impressive. You know, Kakazu is a tough cookie to, to break because he has five hearts. But he was doing work against him as well. And obviously Naruto had to win the battle at the end of the day for narrative purposes like Swag stated. And even against Pain, you know, when he invaded Konoha, it was very impressive. Very impressive. He, he did very well. Um, yeah, he had help. And yeah, he was supposed to lose. Narratively, you know, Nagato slash Pain was a god. You know, he was a god. So he's supposed to win this battle. It was supposed to be Naruto again for narrative purposes to win this battle. Now, he wouldn't have beaten them by himself. I don't think so. But the point is, there is a significant increase in ability and power throughout early Shippuden that is very apparent. And it was quite enjoyable to see. It, re it really made me respect Kakashi. He had some great moments. Showed that he is a true, true shinobi who is very powerful. Very powerful. You know, he's right below the Akatsuki. Actually, above a couple of them. Zetsu and fucking Hidon. He's above them. And arguably Konan. I don't know about that. But he's definitely above Hidon and Zetsu. So he's Akatsuki level. It might be low tier Akatsuki. But the point is, he's formidable. You know, and, and that becomes more and more apparent throughout Shaput. But let's continue. His strength is pretty consistent. Obviously, he gets progressively more powerful, and there is a pretty clear curve that he travels across throughout this chunk of the series. So by the time the Five Kage Summit rolls around, he does seem to have gotten significantly more powerful than he was at the beginning of Shippuden, but he isn't unrecognizably stronger. It's still pretty easy to compare both versions of Kakashi to one another. Like I said earlier in the video, I don't know if I'd go as far as to say that he's Kage level, but by the time that he reaches the end of this curve, I think it's pretty safe to say that he is. If not, he's definitely at the very top of Jonin level, like right on the cusp of Kage level. And I think it's pretty easy to argue that there are multiple Kage level opponents that he'd be able to beat. The two easiest examples, in my opinion, being the fourth Kaze Kage and the fifth Mizu Kage. Now, in the fourth war, Kakashi is obviously ridiculous. I've talked about this multiple times in the past, and it's not because of any significant increase in his physical capabilities or whatever, though there certainly seems to be at least a small one. But instead, it's because in the war arc, it seems like Kakashi is unable to run out of chakra. No matter how hard yeah, he tries, it seems like apparent. Kakashi <laughs> is simply unable to exhaust his chakra supply. He fights for multiple days straight, uses dozens of elemental jutsu, and uses Kamui more times than I care to count. Now this does seem to be due, at least in some small part, to him receiving chakra from Naruto and Kurama later on in the war. But still, based on what we see of him before this point, it's pretty clear that his stamina before the war was nothing compared to what it yeah, was that is definitely. Him. Something True, I agree I like completely. Real quick is uh, we get a pretty clear representation of how much stronger he's gotten since the beginning of the series when we see him fight Zabuza and Haku again. Kakashi wraps things up right away, and you could chalk this up to Zabuza being weaker because of him being an Edo Tensei, but I don't think it's too far fetched to assume that it also has something to do with Kakashi being way stronger. Yeah, it definitely than he does. When they first fought, it definitely so does. This I is agree. A pretty clear indication that he has in fact been getting as much stronger over the course of the series as I've been saying he has throughout these two videos. Now, if you think. 
think I'm exaggerating about how much stronger he gets in the war. I guess I can't blame you, especially if you haven't watched the series in a while. But I promise I'm not doing anything to stretch the truth. Like, Kakashi goes from struggling to fight Daedara at the beginning of Shippuden to charging headfirst into a fight against five Biju and fighting on par with 7th Gate Guy who is strong enough to take out Kisame. I don't yeah, want to spend too much time talking true. about how crazy. crazy he is during the fourth war because I'm worried I'll start sounding redundant. Plus, I've spent plenty of time covering this topic in many of the videos I've made in the past. But what I will say is at this point in the series, Kakashi has easily surpassed Kage level and can oh, yes. without a doubt go toe-to-toe -to -toe with multiple Kage level opponents. He still isn't top tier material. He certainly couldn't beat War Arc, Obito, Madara, or Hashi Yeah, he can't. I agree. Himself. I agree. And even though he did beat Obito in a fight, that fight took place under pretty wacky circumstances. Like, for instance, Obito wasn't able to use Kamui to phase through Kakashi's attacks, and that's kind of his whole thing. So I imagine it was pretty difficult for him to adapt to fighting under those conditions. Not to mention, it seemed like Obito kind of threw the fight because he wanted Kakashi to slam a Raikiri through his chest in order to get rid of the CO Madara placed on his heart. Right. So for the few of you who are going to be like, me, Swag, you're downplaying him. He beat Obito. You know, just, just consider all of those things before you say anything like that. Anyway, this is the part of the video where I'd start talking about Susano Kakashi, but even though he only shows up for a very brief chunk of the manga, I think that there are enough variables and hypotheticals surrounding the subject for it to carry its own video, so I'll probably revisit Kakashi at some point in the future and discuss how strong I think he is with Six Paths Chakra and right. both of Obito's Sharingan. Until next time, though, that's going to be all from me. Great so video by Swag, man. Great job, Swag. Video all the way to the end. If you have any ideas for future video topics you'd like me to cover, either leave them in the comments below or shoot me a mention on Twitter. Make sure you have a great rest of the day, and until my next video, I'll talk to you later. Swag Kage out. Peace Bye. out, Swag. All right, there you guys have that. Great video by Swag. And I'm going to say this about Kakashi. He's one of those characters within Shippuden that gets some of the most extreme power boosts in the entire anime, right? Him, probably Mike Guy, thanks to the Gates, and obviously like Sasuke and Naruto because they're the main characters. But yeah, there's a, a, a very clear and apparent power boost throughout Shippuden constantly for Kakashi. In the war arc, he gets an extreme power boost. I mean, he, it seems like he has no, st no stamina deficiencies at that point. He's fighting tons of Edos, spamming Raikuri, spamming Kamui, like nothing. Like, he damn near Kamui the Tentails. You know, he was Kamuiing everything. Like, he was a monster, you know, a monster. Um, that's a very respectable version of Kakashi, a very formidable one that can be many, many people. You know, many people will be, would be defeated by that version, you know. But all in all, I think Swag did a great job of giving Kakashi the credit he deserves. You know, Kakashi is very formidable. And by the end of Shippuden, he's Kage plus. Kage plus. You know, he's very powerful with the Kamui, with, with his lightning blade, with all his in intellectual ability. He's just truly remarkable. Even without it now in Boruto, he's still pretty remarkable. There isn't many feats on him because he's not really relevant anymore in Boruto, you know, as far as him battling and all that. But he will always be a very formidable and legendary shinobi. And I think Swag did a great job here. I don't have nothing else to really say about it besides that. You know, I think he did a great job. And like I said, there was a huge apparent power boost for Shikashi throughout Shippuden. So I think that's going to wrap it up, folks. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had to do it. You know, I, I, I just realized I didn't do it yet, so I had to bring it to you guys. But if you guys have any other recommendations, please let me know in the comments. I love you all. I rock with you all. Thank you for all the support. So I'll catch you in the next video. This is Jay the Great signing out. Peace.